Hey everybody, K0LWC here. Uh, so excited to bring you this video <laughs> this weekend, and that is the International Space Station and its new FM repeater. It has been the talk of the ham radio community all week long. Uh, before, you know, we just had FM Simplex and Digi, uh, but now the International Space Station has an FM repeater, like, what? So where I'm at here at my home, I don't have a great view of the horizon. We have tons of, of trees around us. So let's hop in the car in the K0LWC Electric Mobile and let's head down to the local grocery store where it's a much better view of the horizon and see if we can't make contact with that new FM repeater. Let's go. We are here at the wonderful High V grocery store uh, in the K0LWC Mobile and we are going to attempt to make contact via the FM repeater on the International Space Station today with KB0TDW, my friend Dan down in Omaha. Now, I am using my Comet SBB5 antenna here on an NMO mount uh, off the rear trunk lid of the Tesla and we'll be using a Kenwood D710. So let's hop on the car and see if we can't make this thing happen. Now, if you're new to the International Space Station, they used to just have FM Simplex and a Digipeater for packet on board. Now, this week, they finally got an FM repeater on the air. How cool is that? Yes, it is the world's most expensive repeater. And man, is it cool. So if you're curious to how you could access it, and it's so sensitive, you could use an HT with a rubber duck antenna. So you could just stand in your driveway and try this out. The uplink frequency or your transmit frequency will be 145.990 requiring a PL tone of 67 Hertz. The downlink on the right side of the radio here is 437.800 and that will be the frequency in which you receive transmissions from the ISS repeater. Now, I'm going to attempt to make contact with my buddy Dan, KB0TDW, in Omaha from where I'm at here in the Twin Cities. Uh, he is ready down his way in Omaha. We'll see if we can't make this happen. It's been pretty busy with tons of people trying to get on and use a new repeater and understandably so. It's so cool. But uh, we're going to give it a shot. Let's wait for the thing to come in range and see if we can't make it happen. Oh, we were so close to making that contact. Obviously, uh, myself and Dan could not complete the contact. But now before everybody rushes into my comment section, let me point out a couple important points. If I had a directional antenna instead of a vertical, this would be a whole lot easier. In fact, I could just use an HT with five watts and it would be like shooting fish in a barrel. So a directional antenna makes all the difference when you're trying to work satellites or in this case, the ISS. Um, so that's number one. Uh, number two, uh, you saw me adjusting the downlink frequency and that's really me trying to compensate for Doppler shift. So just as a, a car horn or a train horn, you get the Doppler effect. The same thing happens to frequency uh, with these satellites and or the ISS moving at over 21 thousand miles per hour in the case of the ISS, um, you're going to get a shift in frequency when something is moving that fast. So while we didn't make contact, let me share a few videos of other folks around the world who are also working the ISS uh, and they're doing some pretty awesome stuff. Check out these videos. Mike Zero, Juliet Fox Papa, India Oscar, 9 Sierra Kilo. Yeah, QSL 59 India Oscar 91 Sierra Kilo over. Uh, that is correct, that is correct. Uh, yeah, 59 India Oscar 91 Sierra Kilo. Many thanks, 7 freeze. Lima Unit 4, 3, 4, 3, Charlie, Alpha, 5, 9, 7, 3, 4, Charlie. 
Charlie Alves. 